G'day guys, Matthew with the Earth Circle, and today is going to be one of those very rare and unique videos where I've actually gone through and done a lot of research. So do forgive me if it's rather boring or if you think you've heard it all before or whatever. Um, but I'm trying to actually figure out something. Uh, recently I did a video talking about all the bullshit around Games Workshop and um, Armies on Parade and banning Forge World from stores and all kinds of stuff like that. Now, Ty over at Wagga Wagga 40k, he repeatedly emailed Forge World and Games Workshop on the matter and finally got an answer. See, the key thing with Armies on Parade is the only entrance criteria it says is Armies on Parade is a global, com uh, global celebration of your Citadel miniatures collections held in every Warhammer and Games Workshop store across the world. Well... The only criteria for this competition is that it's got to be Citadel miniatures. And the only restriction is that the army must fit into a 2x2 two two board now. So it doesn't even have to be a real army anymore. Whatever. Now, Ty decided to email Forge World for some clarification and the Warhammer community team and said, Is Forge World actually a Citadel miniature? Believe it or not, there response was no no forge world is not considered to be a citadel miniature and i thought that's strange uh forge world models forge worlds are owned by games workshop citadel is a games workshop thing citadel miniatures is something we all grew up with this can't be right so i started looking at my boxes and none of my forge world boxes or blister packs actually say citadel miniatures on them Instead, they all come with a copyright preamble um, that says copyright Games Workshop Limited 20 whatever Games Workshop Forge World Citadel and all associated logos are either uh, registered trademark or trademark and or copyright Games Workshop Limited blah 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 blah. The same sort of preamble can be found at the bottom of all of their websites basically. It's this big long load of crap here. Also, there's one in there just for The Hobbit itself. Warner Brothers, another one for New Light Productions for Lord of the Rings. So, that's a thing. Anyway, interesting thing to note about this, however, was when I also looked at my Games Workshop boxes, some had the Citadel logo, some didn't. Uh, for example, the Betrayal at Kelth box, which focuses on the Horus Heresy and is itself a separate board game, no Citadel logo. So, I delved into it a little further. Citadel miniatures. So here is just the Wikipedia page for Citadel and of course Games Workshop, um, Forge World, all that kind of thing together. Now, interesting thing to note, Citadel was a subsidiary of Games Workshop but they produced specific games um, of their own. Chronicle miniatures, Iron Core miniatures, Marauder miniatures, all that sort of thing. Um, all part of the Citadel brand. But Citadel itself was absorbed into Games Workshop. Now, Games Workshop, as we know it, produces like Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigma, um, The Hobbit, slash Lord of the Rings. However, Citadel is what produces their paints, their glues, their hobby tools. So technically, nothing is a Citadel miniature if you went directly by what everything is listed as, um, as what it's produced under or labelled under. So I thought that was something interesting to note. The next interesting thing to note is actually what I think is a very grey, um, ambiguous area. And when I say grey, it's actually pretty clear cut, and that is things like The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Now, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings is a Games Workshop game. If I go onto the Games Workshop page at its own section, it will on Forge World as well. The question is, what is the crossover here? Well, one could clearly state that if it's made by Forge World, it's a Forge World miniature, therefore it can't be used in Armies on Parade in a Games Workshop store. If you consider that only Games Workshop plastics and resins count as real models. Well, that's a bit strange when you have books that are sold in Games Workshop with the rules for Forge World units specifically listed in them. It gets even harder to delineate when it's something like Blood Bowl, um, for example, which is run out of Forge World, who are running the Specialist Games Department now, but sold in Games Workshop. 
but all the characters and all the rules come in the books that are sold on the game's workshop page. So you have units that are considered illegal in a game's workshop, however the units are only sold by Forge World. So therefore you can't use that Forge World model in a game's workshop store. However, if you were to make a version of that model using Games Workshop's plastics, that very same model would be okay to use. So, there's a whole lot of like ambiguity here where common sense just isn't being applied in my opinion. Now, what's also interesting to note is I went through a lot of different pages, investor relations, collecting Citadel miniatures, and all they say is Games Workshop hobby is collecting, building, and painting, and playing games with Citadel miniatures. There is no delineation of what is a Citadel miniature, who produces Citadel miniatures, it's all considered to be part of Games Workshop proper, as is Forge World. So that was no help. When I looked at their business model, the business model is all about getting people to play the Games Workshop games. They don't delineate either. And this is straight information they give to their shareholders. Basically their whole opinion is we want people to play Games Workshop games and that's it, that's always a Games Workshop games. That's all types of Games Workshop stuff. Um, and it's mostly about growing their business, which makes sense it is for shareholders, not for hobbyists. So that was no help. I looked at Games Workshop Investor Relations on the hobby. When they talk about collecting, um, there are many reasons to collect, blah, blah, blah. No mention to it's collecting Citadel miniatures. No mention of Forge World or separate subsidiary divisions. It's all about just Games Workshop itself. This all comes from Games Workshop, the parent company. So it's got nothing to do with the subsidiaries or anything like that. When I look at retailers, it just says that they're the world leader in producing miniature gaming products, the largest company operating in this sector, thousands of retail trading partners across the globe, blah, 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 blah. The resources available from this site are to support Games Workshop retailers in the sale and promotion of Games Workshop products. Uh, what products is that? All of them? Is it just Citadel miniatures? Is it, well, apparently the list is Games Workshop, Citadel, White Door, Space Marine, 40k, Warhammer, all their little copyrights. Again, there's no delineation of what is and isn't considered to be a Games Workshop product. It's all technically a Games Workshop product. This gets even hazier when you consider that some Games Workshop stores are now just called Warhammer stores. So a Warhammer store, are they hosting Games Workshop products or are they hosting Warhammer products? I don't know. Anyway, the long short of this is, is that it's all a big clusterfuck. Yes, that's what it is. Clusterfuck is a whole bunch of little fuck-ups that all combine together to make one big fuck-up. And that's the situation right now. You have a company that's saying, this is our product, you're welcome to use it in our games until we decide that you're not welcome to use it in our games. And that will vary from location to location. Now, our reason for this is very spurious, and that is that we don't consider Forge World to be our product until it is our product. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know, but that's what they're saying. It's such a loose thing. And the more you talk to people about it, when you talk to industry insiders, people who know Games Workshop staff, who are Games Workshop staff, and they say things like, oh, well, you know, it's because they're afraid that if they allow people to bring Forge World into stores, it's going to cut into that store's margins. I personally don't see how. I think you're encouraging people when they come into the store and play your product. Um, as opposed to, like, if you say to someone, no, you can't play your Forge World at all in our store, they're more likely to just not come to your store anymore. Therefore, they're not going to buy anything from your store. So you've shot yourself in the foot more than you've helped yourself there. And matter of factly, a lot of the products produced by Forge World are, if they're successful, they're copied by Games Workshop. Bane Blades, uh, the early models of Power Armor for the Horus Heresy, they've all been com uh, taken over by Games Workshop. I was going to say confiscated, but... <laughs> uh, I believe Forge World bought out airbrush paints first, but then Games Workshop followed straight after. So, it's a funny old thing going on here. It's like... Games Workshop is just... There's just no common sense. And it's really interesting to see what's happening. I've 
like I say, I've researched the fuck out of this topic um, for probably two days now, um, liaising back and forth with my mate Ty, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with this, because it's such a loose definition. And the fact that they, they basically run Games Workshop like a franchise, not as a big company. They basically give complete free reign to each Games Workshop to run its own affairs, and that's fine. Because no one should be micromanaged. However, you do need to have some consistent rules across the board, forgive the pun, um, for how you apply things like Forge World, how you apply things like Blood Bowl. There are stores that won't allow people to play Blood Bowl. It's sold in the store, on the shelf, not allowed to be used. Why? Oh, because it takes up precious space that might be used to showcase Age of Sigma. What the fuck? If you're not allowed to use it in that store, don't sell it in that store, because that's pretty jack in my opinion, pretty rude. Um, yeah, anyway. Anyone who's curious about this, I'll try and I'll try and put in links to each one of these pages, there's quite a few of them, um, into the description below the video. I'm, yeah, can't believe I've had to make this video, because it seems like common sense that all products are Citadel miniatures, but then apparently, as per their Wikipedia and their own pages, nothing is Citadel miniatures anymore. Citadel only makes their hobbying products. So, yeah, bit of a funny one, that. Anyway, if anyone can clarify on this, uh, build some more info, give some more insight, please do so in the comments below. Tell us everything you know. Um, and if you work for the company or whatever and don't want to talk out loud, come private messages on Facebook, we never give away names, uh, even if people say it's okay to use their names, we generally will withhold those because we don't want people to get shit on, basically. They've given us information in good faith, we're not going to throw them to the fucking wolves. Anyway, I'm Mac with the Outer Circle, thank you all for watching, uh, hopefully we'll get a weekly scrub down out this afternoon, so it might pop up, say tonight, tomorrow morning, Australia time, we'll see how we go. See you all next time.